Bonjour, bonjour tout le monde. Comment allez-vous? Okay, it's CXC oral practice time again, and we're looking at the topic of home and family. So, in today's lesson, here are the lesson objectives. Dans cette vidéo, vous allez écouter les questions sur le, sur le thème de home and family. In this video, you're going to listen to the questions on the theme of home and family. Vous allez essayer de comprendre les questions en français avant de voir les, les réponses sur l'écran. You're going to try to understand the questions in French before seeing them on the screen. Vous allez essayer de formuler une réponse avant que la réponse suggérée soit révélée. You're going to try to formulate a response before the suggested response is shown on the screen. So this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to ask the question once in French. I would ask the question once in French. After that, you will have about 10 seconds to respond. You may also pause the video and try to come up with your response. After which I will give a suggested response and get into the explanation of why we're answering that way. Okay, let's go. Que fais-tu pour aider tes amis? Fais-tu pour aider tes amis? Okay, let's go. Did you understand that question? The question was, what do you do? to help your friends. Que fais-tu pour aider tes amis? What sort of response would you give? There we go. You could respond, for example, remember that when we're doing these questions, we want to give the most fulsome answer. We want to give as much of a full response as possible, right? So that we can get our responses in the very good category or with a wide and varied vocabulary. You don't want to answer given the bare minimum. So that's why it's important you practice from now so that you're comfortable with the language and with your responses. So, que fais-tu pour aider tes amis? You could respond by saying, I like helping my friends. How do you say I like helping my friends? You'd say, Jem, or even I like a lot. Jem, beaucoup, les mes amis. How do you help them now? What sort of things do you do to help your friends? Do you help them with their homework? Do you talk to them when they're stressed? What sort of things? You see, the oral, the, this, this oral conversation that you're having, it's not to stress you, it's not to pressure you. It is meant to find out if you feel comfortable enough speaking the language. So it's not, don't see your examiner as somebody who's there to fail you. They're not there to fail you, they're there to facilitate a conversation with you in the French language. So what you're supposed to do is just practice so that you're able to easily respond. And I hope that this video will help you to do so. So you say, j'aime beaucoup aider mes amis. Je peux, I can, les appeler. I can call them, what does it do? Quand ils sont stressés. They call them when they're stressed. See? Okay. J'aime aussi les aider. J'aime aussi aider mes amis avec Leur devoir. I also like to help my friends with their homework. So, que fais-tu pour aider tes amis? J'aime beaucoup aider mes amis. Je peux les appeler quand ils sont stressés. J'aime aussi aider mes amis avec leur devoir. I believe that's a sufficient response. 
Je sais, j'aime beaucoup aider mes amis. I really like to help my friends. Je peux les appeler quand ils sont stressés. I can call them when they're stressed. J'aime aussi aider mes amis avec leurs devoirs. So when you see these questions in French, think about how you would respond in English. It's, it requires some critical thinking, right? So think about how you would respond in English and then based on that, give a simple response in French. I believe these responses are simple enough and you'd be able to come up with them on your own. Let's continue. Next question. Quoi? C'est qui? Comment t'appelles-tu? Pardon me, let's go again. Comment t'appelles-tu? Question is, comment t'appelles-tu? Here we go. You all know that question. It is, what is your name? You could respond by saying, your name. Je m'appelle. Now, if you also wanted to give a bit more information than your than your name here, you can say, je m'appelle Mademoiselle Taylor et j'ai 20 ans. Je m'appelle Mademoiselle Taylor et j'ai 20 ans. J'habite à Kingston. Okay, you could give a bit more information if you would like. Did I misspell Jabit right here? Abita Kingston. My name is Miss Taylor. I am 20 years old and I live in Kingston. However, stopping at Juma Pell Mademoiselle Taylor is sufficient because the question is only asking you what is your name. If you do want to give more of a response, like I said, your objective is to get responses that land you in the very good category. And to be in the very good category, you have to have a wide and varied vocabulary. So that means that when you're answering questions, you don't answer the bare minimum response. You answer in a very full manner that indicates that you are you have mastered the language to a certain level and to master the language you have to practice from now time is not too far gone we're still in january i'll meet at the end and you can do this je m'appelle mademoiselle taylor et j'ai 20 ans j'habite à kingston okay listen again please toi c'est qui toi c'est qui Now, just to inform you, you don't want a situation where you're sitting in front of the examiner and you're, you have paused for a very long time. We're going to talk about using fillers like uh, or a law. Then, you know, while you formulate your response in your head, you don't want to get marched on for hesitating before responding. All right. That doesn't mean that you should rush and respond, but that means that you need to practice now as much as possible so that you are confident enough in your responses and in the language that you can respond freely because you get marked for fluency and get marked on for hesitation so let's go that question was toi c'est qui that's a very informal question to ask but a very informal structure but like i said it's just a test if you know the language it is asking the same thing as qui est tu qui est tu who are you right now toi c'est qui or qui est tu you would give a more full response. So you'd say, for example, je m'appelle Mademoiselle Taylor, j'ai 20 ans, et j'habite à Kingston, et j'habite à Kingston. Because it's asking who are you, you could even say, j'aime beaucoup aller à la plage, J'adore glace. C'est trop bon. And that's me in a nutshell. 
Je m'appelle Mademoiselle Taylor, j'ai 20 ans et j'habite à Kingston. J'aime beaucoup aller à la plage et j'adore les glaces, c'est trop bon. OK? You're having a conversation with the examiner, OK? It's not an interrogation, it's a conversation. And it is not meant to fail you, but to facilitate just a conversation to see how comfortable you are in the language, to see how much you are able to express yourself. Look at it that way because the examiner really is not there to fail you. So, je m'appelle Mademoiselle Taylor. My name is Miss Taylor. J'ai 20 ans and 20 years old, not. Et j'habite à Kingston and I live in Kingston. J'aime beaucoup aller à la plage. I really like going to the beach. Et j'adore les glaces and I love ice cream. C'est trop bon. It's too good. It's so good. Yes, it is. All right. So what, how would you describe yourself in a nutshell? I'm not giving you these responses for you to duplicate them and put them and swap them. No, you're giving these responses to formulate your own, to give an idea of how to respond to the question, because like I said, it does require a bit of thinking. Okay, let's continue. Décris une occasion inoubliable que tu as passé en famille. Décris une occasion inoubliable que tu as passé en famille. All right, did you understand that question? I hope you did. Let's look at the question itself. It says, Decree une occasion inoubliable que tu as passé en famille. That's asking you to describe an unforgettable, inoubliable, unforgettable, an unforgettable moment, something unforgettable that you had that happened with your family. Describe an unforgettable occasion, event, that you spent with your family. All right? What could that be? Well, like I said, these situations require for you to think, okay? You don't just get up and just respond. You have to think about it and you would have had to thought about it from before, right? So what is an unforgettable experience that you could have had with your family? Tell me, it could have been a wedding, it could have been a vacation. Yes, let's talk about a vacation, right? So where are you going to be talking about a vacation experience that was unforgettable? Where did we go? How do you respond to this question? Know that you know what it means. How do you respond? Think about it in English. You'd say to yourself, well, I really loved when I went to Holiday Inn or Iberia Hotel or Bahia Principe, I don't know. I love the beach, I love the size. I really love when I went to cool runnings. Cool runnings. Let's talk about cool runnings, right? Wow means like wow in French. Start by saying alors. That's a good filler. You can start by saying alors, okay, or then. Alors means then. So you use this as a filler to start your your um response so alors let's talk about something unforgettable that happened as a family alors nous sommes allés and we'll be allé with an e well the examiner won't know the difference because you're speaking you're not writing nous sommes allés à couronnings Lani Dernier. All right, so we went to Kuronin's Lani Dernier last year. A city fantastic. A city fantastic. We went to Kuronin's last year. Let me just put in the accent marks. The songs are there at Kuronin's. Lani Dernier. City fantastic. I'm missing an E here. The 
sommes allés à Kubernetes l'année dernière et c'était fantastique. You're describing, so you cannot just be a you cannot just be a one sentence. You have to talk about what made it so funny, what made it so fantastic. So alors, nous sommes allés à Kubernetes l'année dernière et c'était fantastique. Nous avons nous nous sommes bien amusé dans l'eau et nous avons beaucoup mangé au restaurant là-bas. What are we saying in the sentence? Could somebody tell me? So we're saying, okay, well, we went to Cool Runnings last year and it was great. We fully enjoyed ourselves. This expression here, nous nous sommes bien amusés, the verb is s'amuser, and it means to enjoy oneself, as you know. So we're putting it in the past tense because we are talking about an event that happened last year. I noticed that many times students make this mistake with the verb samuse to enjoy oneself. So you're saying we enjoyed ourselves. No, no, so yeah, the adverb as you're learning, amuse. No, no, some bia amuse. We really enjoyed ourselves in the water. Et nous avons. Beaucoup mangé au restaurant là-bas. Là-bas, là-bas means over there. What else could we say? What else could we say? You can say, for example, moi, j'ai beaucoup aimé les toboggans aquatiques. Je veux y retourner cette année. J'ai beaucoup aimé we're saying basically, well, nous sommes allés à Cool Runnings. We went to Cool Runnings l'année dernière, last year. Et c'était fantastique. It was great. Nous nous sommes bien amusés. We really enjoyed ourselves down low in the water. Et nous avons beaucoup mangé. And we, we ate a lot in the restaurants over there. Moi, for me... J'ai beaucoup aimé, I really like the toboggan aquatic, the water slides. Je veux y retourner cette année, I want to go back there this year. There you have it, that's one entire expressive sentence, the sentence is an expressive paragraph, you could say, on describing an unforgettable experience that you spent with your family. You could talk about a beach trip, you could talk about a wedding, you could talk about a family reunion. Right, there are many things that you could talk about, but so choose the simplest one that you can manage and express yourself to the fullest in it. Okay, talk about things that you did to enjoy yourself, talk about how your family felt, talk about, think about something that you really enjoy doing and write about it. It does not have to be true, 
ladies you don't have to tell the truth about what you did you can always make up something and express something made up just stick to your story all right let's continue oh man say that's it kelage at you you know that question very well kelage at you Okay, Kilaja tu, how old are you? And you respond by saying, Je douze ans. Je vingt ans. I am twenty years old. Not. Okay. If I ask you the question, c'est quand ton anniversaire? C'est quand ton anniversaire? I'm asking you, second to an anniversary. I'm asking you, when is your birthday? What is your birthday? When is your birthday? All right. You know that meal is how you say a thousand. All right. So the meal is two thousand. Okay, so content anniversary, you respond by saying anniversary et le 5 août, not 5 avril 2005. My birthday is the 5th of April 2005. You could also say, je suis né le 5 avril. This is easy to remember, so nobody should have any difficulty with 2005. If you were born in the 1980s, then there would be difficulty. But this is 2005, it's very easy to say. No one should have any difficulty saying that. Je suis né le 5 April 2005. My birthday is the 5th of April, or I was born the 5th of April 2005. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Où est-ce que ta famille préfère vivre? Où est-ce que ta famille préfère vivre? Okay, let's look at that. Were you able to come up with a response? Did you understand the question? Où est-ce que ta famille préfère vivre? Let's look at it. What is it asking? Where does your family prefer to live? Where does your family prefer to live? Now, if you're going to state a preference, you might as well state why as well before you're asked why. So in your response that you're giving for où est-ce que ta famille préfère vivre, I would suggest you offer a response to why as well. Où est-ce que ta famille préfère vivre? Where are some of the preferences? You could prefer to live in the country or in the town. You could prefer to live locally or overseas. Why would you prefer to live in the country? Why would you prefer to live in the city? Je préfère vivre en ville car il y a tous les magasins tout près. Je préfère vivre en ville car il y a tous les magasins tout près. I prefer to live in the town because there are all of the shops very nearby, very close, tout près, very nearby. That's a good reason. Je préfère vivre en ville car il y a tous les magasins tout près. I prefer to live in the town because all of the shops are nearby. What about in the country? You could say, je préfère vivre à la campagne, à l'air, beaucoup, let's say beaucoup, et plus pure. 
and their masculine or feminine again let's verify just a minute hmm. Okay, I'm correct. It's masculine. Okay. Je préfère vivre à la campagne car l'air est pur et frais. Autant en vie, il y a trop de This is big dioxide. The carbon. I prefer to live in the country. Je préfère vivre à la campagne car l'air est plus pur et frais. I prefer to live in the country because the air is more pure and fresh. Pourtant, en ville, however, in the city, il y a trop d'émissions. There are too many emissions of carbon dioxide. Il y a trop d'émissions de dioxyde de carbone. All right. What do you think? Why do you prefer living in the country or in the town? Je préfère vivre à la campagne car l'air est plus pur. There is accent over it. No, there is not. Effet en ville, il y a trop d'émissions. There are too many emissions of hydrogen, of carbon dioxide. Sorry. Okay. So if you're going to give a preference, you might as well state why, because as the night follows day, best believe that why will be the next question. Pourquoi? Où est-ce que ta famille préfère vivre? Now, since you're talking about your family, you would have said, nous préférons. Nous préférons. Nous préférons. Vivre en ville, car il y a tous les magasins tout près. You prefer living in the town, in the city, because all of the shops are nearby. Nous préférons vivre à la campagne, car l'air est plus pur et frais. We prefer living in the country, because the air is more pure and fresh. You could have left it there. Okay, you don't have to say, pourtant en ville, il y a trop d'émissions de dioxyde de carbone. You don't have to go there. You could stop with the first sentence. Nous préférons vivre à la campagne, car l'air est plus pur et frais. Okay, how are we going so far? How is it going so far? Let's look at a few more. Who habites tu? Who habites tu? You should know that one at the back of your hand. Where do you live? Simply say, Javit. Kingston. Jamaica. You don't have to add in Jamaica. Simply say, Javit at Kingston. Dans une maison. Et quand? Blanche. You can say, for example, j'habite à Kingston, en Jamaïque, dans une maison très grande et blanche. That shows that you have the vocabulary. J'habite à Kingston, en Jamaïque, dans une maison très grande et blanche. I live in Kingston, in Jamaica, in a very big white house. Okay? 
that shows that you're giving more than the minimum response because where you live doesn't only have to do with city or country, but it also has to do with what you live in, a house, an apartment, on a farm, as you learned in first form in grade seven. All right, let's look at the other component. Please listen carefully. Tu habites dans un appartement ou une maison? Tu habites dans un appartement ou une maison? Okay, here we go. You understand that question? It's asking, do you live in an apartment or a house? You would have already answered this question here. So you won't be asked this question here, okay? So if you're asked this question, it's because you didn't answer it up here, all right? Let's give an, a response to this question, Jabit. Dans une maison, à... Let's go again. J'habite dans une maison très grande, blanche. Il y a sept pièces dans la maison. I live in a house that's very big and white. There are seven rooms. In pièce is a room. There are seven rooms in the house. Trois chambres, three bedrooms, deux salles de bain, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, that's five, une cuisine, that's six, un salon, or un salle de séjour, living room, okay? J'habite dans une maison très grande et blanche, il y a Sept pièces dans la maison, trois chambres, deux salles de bain, une cuisine et un salon ou en salle de séjour. OK? There are seven rooms in the house, three rooms, two bathrooms, one kitchen, a living room. That's seven rooms, OK? So you give more than the minimum response. You show that you have a wide and varied vocabulary that puts you in the very good category. That's the category you're aiming for. All right. Tu habites dans un appartement ou une maison. J'habite dans une maison très grande et blanche. Il y a sept pièces dans la maison, trois chambres, deux salles de bain, une cuisine et un salon ou en salle de séjour. All right. So if you notice, when you, when you were asked who habites you, if you responded by saying j'habite à Kingston en Jamaïque, dans une maison très grande et blanche. Right, you would have already answered if you live in an apartment or a house. All right, so it's best to give us a full, the most full response that you can ever give. Rather than being minimalist with your responses, give a full response and not give the minimum. The bare minimum is not going to work. All right, l'appartement est comment? Oops, l'appartement est comment? L'appartement est comment? Okay. L'appartement est comment? If you did, did you, <laughs> I showed it before. But did you understand that question? The question is asking, what is that question asking? L'appartement est comment? It's asking, what is the apartment like? Or la maison est comment? Okay, so we're talking about a house. La maison est comment? What is a house like? You would have already described it up here. All right? Il y a sept pièces dans la maison. Okay, let me write it again. Just for reinforcement, you can see. La maison est très grande et blanche. Keep your description simple. The house is very big and white. And then you write back. Il y a sept pièces dans la maison. There are seven rooms in the house. Trois chambres, deux salles de bain, une cuisine, un salon. There are seven rooms in the house. You write that back. So the number of questions you're asked on that particular topic really depends on how much you not true. So to get to ensure that you don't get follow-up questions, you answer in the most full way possible. 
right? So, who have beat you? You could have responded with everything up here. J'habite à Kingston en Jamaïque, dans une maison très grande et blanche. You'd have answered, describe the house, and you'd have answered as well. Est-ce que tu habites dans un appartement, une maison? All right, this is part one. We're going to be doing another part to this video. So, let's pause here, take a breather, and then we'll watch part two of this video. Merci beaucoup, les filles. Les garçons, au revoir.